be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Beloved, uh, St. Stephen's Feast is a rather strange feast to come right after Christmas. You usually don't think of the Christmas season as a season for martyrs, a season for violence, or a season for stoning. It's usually a time when we sing joy to the world. But right after Christmas, we have the festival and martyrdom of St. Stephen. I think it's a good thing. It's a way of kind of bringing us down from that Christmas high that we're on, that joyous celebration that we just had, a kind of way of reminding us the ramifications, the impact that the birth of our Lord has. So our gospel tells us two important things. The first thing is that Christ sends and continues to send faithful men and faithful women to guide his church, whether it's men in the office of pastor or women in the vocation of deacons. And second, it also tells us how Christ responds to the unbelieving world with compassion and lamentation. So how does our text start off? It says, I send you, I send you prophets and wise men and scribes. As we heard from the Old Testament, God is sending and continually sends prophet after prophet, wise man after wise man, scribe to record the words of God to his people. And how does his people respond? They respond with anger and hate. They stone the very men that God send them. I mean, think about our Old Testament lesson. Imagine, for example, a pastor walks into his church and the people so angry at God take stones, hymnals, whatever they have, and kill their own pastor. That is what the people of God, they're killing their own prophets. And then this was what we hear in the gospel, or excuse me, the epistle of Acts. God continues to send faithful men. What happens to Stephen? And it says, Stephen, full of grace and power, was doing great wonders and signs among the people. That great wonders and signs was from God. He was giving testament to his vocation, his calling, that he was there to proclaim the gospel. And how did the people in the synagogues respond? They get angry. They get upset like their fathers before them in the Old Testament. And they stone him. And it says they cast him out of the city and stoned him. They didn't want him even in the city. They took him out to the fields and they killed him. But before they kill him, in his sermon, how does Stephen respond? He says, <laughs> rather harshly, you stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, whom you have not betrayed and murdered. You who received the law, delivered by angels, did not keep it. Beloved, in our own confessions, it reminds us in the apology that we should honor the saints, not like the Roman Catholics do in the sense of praying or worship, but in the sense of giving thanks for them, remembering their good deeds, the virtues they did, and then acting out those virtues by living a godly life. And so that's why we have these martyrdoms, these feasts of saints, to remind us of the good things that God has done through men and women, both in the Bible and even in our lives today. So what does our Lord says? I send you prophets and wise men and scribes, some of whom you will kill and crucify, and some you will flog in your synagogues and persecute from town to town. Even after his death and resurrection, God the Son sends out and continues to send faithful men. And what happened to St. Stephen, as I said earlier? He was persecuted, cast out of town, and killed. But notice in this verse I just read, what does it say? I'll read it to you again. I send you prophets and wise men and scribes, some of whom you will kill and crucify, some you will flog in your synagogues and persecute from town to town. No doubt, I bet, being good Christians you are, you thought immediately of who? You thought of your Lord. They will kill and crucify and flog. Our Lord, yesterday, in a church year, was born. We remember that. We celebrate that with joy. And then what happens? We receive this martyrdom of St. Stephen. It grounds us in the reality of what happens to our Lord. He came for what reason? 
he came to be crucified. For who? For you. And so this comes with what it means to be a Christian. You follow in the way of the Lord. You follow in that path. And what comes with it? Is it always going to be joy to the world? I mean, tell me, has the past few years been joy to the world? No, it's been hard and difficult. The Christian life, like the, Lord or, or the life of our Lord, is filled with suffering. Not because the Father wants suffering, but because we live in a fallen and broken world. And we follow in that path that our Lord has laid out for us. And sometimes that means persecution. Now, beloved, what do you think of when you think of persecution? Think about that for a moment. Do you automatically jump to death? Well, I tell you, death will be the preferred desire. Why? Well, if you're persecuted, you get to make a confession. That suffering ends. But that's not how the devil in the world works. You know that's not how the devil in the world works. He doesn't want to kill you so that you can make a good confession and go to heaven. And by confession, I mean speak faithfully about the gospel and about what the Lord has done. No, he wants to bring more suffering. And like many of our brothers throughout the history of the church, they suffered at the hands of either the government or of wicked men and women. And it's through that suffering that the devil can easily chip away from you, wear you down, break you, so that you do not make that good confession. But that's why we must always cling to God's word, to his sacraments, and cling to our Lord. And how do we do this? By practicing those virtues that St. Stephen displayed, by knowing the word of the Lord, by depending on it, trusting it above all things, even when things are hard. You're all good Lutherans. You know the favorite hymn of ours, The Mighty Fortress is Our God. And what does it say? Even though they can kill and take our wife, family, and goods, at the end of the day, we cling to our Lord. We teach our family to cling to our Lord. So that at the end, should God forbid you be persecuted, we can make a good confession. We can remain faithful. The text goes on to say, as they were stoning Stephen, he cried out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against him. And when he said this, he fell asleep. Now that's from the book of Acts. If you notice Stephen, how does he respond to his people that are about to kill him? He responds like his Lord. Receive my spirit. Do not hold this against the people. And if you remember in the gospel, what does the Lord do when he's talking to the Pharisees? He says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I long to gather you like a, little, like a hen gathers chicks. The Lord has compassion. The Lord laments, that is, he mourns for his people. Not just Israel, but for the entire world. So you see here the similarities between Stephen and Jesus. That they both mourn and do not hold it against the world that does not want to hear the gospel. I mean, you think of Christmas season, how many people are more concerned with the economical side, the spending side of Christmas? How many of our young people in my generation or my brother's generation really know what Christmas is about? Instead, they scorn the word of the Lord. They hate it. But as Christians, we are called to be faithful, continually calling out for compassion that the Lord will have mercy. And how do we know he has mercy? Well, he said it. I long to gather you to himself. I mean, he's talking about the unbelieving world. What do you think of the church? How does he feel about the church? Well, I tell you, he has already gathered us underneath his mighty wings, and we are protected. So when you think of these festivals and remembrance of martyrs and brave men and women who died either in the Old or New Testament, or even faithful Christians who have died today or in the years to come, remember what they ground themselves in. They ground themselves in the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, because it is the gospel that gives them strength to be able to face these hard times. So I pray that you will take that to heart and prepare yourselves as godly Christians, not for the worst to come, but prepare yourself in the sense of reading and knowing the word of God and remembering that he is always there like a mighty hen gathering his little chicks to him. 
So in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.